Here we have two examples of finding the critical points. The first one is f of x equals x times the square root of x minus a. So before we get too far into this, let's review what the critical points are. Okay, so when it comes to these critical points, we're looking for a point c. It has to be in the domain of f of x. That'll come into play in these exercises, in fact, um, at which the derivative is zero or the derivative does not exist. Those are the two options we're looking for for something to be considered a critical point. And remember that we're only looking for the x values here. So for this derivative in part a, I'm gonna rewrite this first as f of x equals x times x minus a to the 1 half. All right, it's always good to get rid of those radicals, exchange them for rational exponents because it's easier to do the derivatives on those. Okay, then our derivative requires the product rule, so we can do that. a prime b plus b prime a so a prime b is 1 times x minus a to the 1 half plus b prime a plus 1 half x minus a to the negative 1 half times x. And then we want to set this equal to 0 and essentially solve it. So the calculus is done for now, but the algebra can be quite involved when it comes to the applications of derivatives. And there's a certain technique that often comes in handy when solving these kinds of equations. It'll come up again and again. You'll get to the same spot where you have these negative exponents going on, and the question is, how do you proceed algebraically from here? So here's the technique. Factor out the term with the most negative exponent. So I'll show the technique method, and then I'll show you another method using least common denominator, so you can see both ways. So here we go. I'm factoring out the term with the most negative exponent, so this is this x minus a to the negative 1 half. So that's going to come out to the front. Okay, so x minus a to the negative 1 half comes out to the front. And then what's left behind? Well, when you factor something out to the front, you're actually dividing all the terms left behind by that factor. That's what factoring out means, is you divide everything left behind by it. And when you divide by a term, you subtract the exponents. So here we have left behind the quantity x minus a to the 1 half minus a negative 1 half, right? Because we factored out a term with negative 1 half. So we subtract that out minus a minus 1 half. And I know that seems convoluted, but something really incredible happens. Okay, on to the other term. This whole x minus a to the 1 half came out to the front. So we're left with simply plus x over 2 here. Okay, so this looks terrible, equals zero. Um, and you're probably thinking, why would I ever use this method? This is the worst thing I've ever seen. Well, check this out. x minus a to the negative one half is still hanging out in the front. And inside we have one half minus a minus one half is simply x minus a to the first power. So we have x minus a plus x over two equals zero, which we can further simplify down x minus a to the negative one half and the second parentheses becomes, well, we have x plus x over 2, so that's 3 halves x minus a equals 0. So now we have two different factors to work with. This first one here is where f prime equals 0, and this, this one on the left here is where f prime does not exist because we have our negative exponent there, which means this is actually 1 over x minus a, so this is down in the denominator. So for the equal zero part, we have three halves x minus a equals zero, equals zero, so that tells us three halves x equals a, multiplied by two thirds, x equals two thirds a. So that's potentially a critical point. And for the does not exist side, we simply have um, x minus a, equals zero, because that would give us zero in the denominator, which tells us that x equals a. Now, if you recall, when I defined critical points, I was careful to say that these points must be in the domain of f of x. And I ask you, is, is x equals 2 thirds a in the domain of our original function? Is x equals 2 thirds a in the domain of our original function? Well, no, it's not, because if I put in 2 thirds a right there for x, I have 2 thirds a minus 1 a that gives us a negative inside the radical. So x equals 2 thirds a is not in the domain, but x equals a is. So we have to toss 
two-thirds A. It was a lot of work and it was a wonderful solution, but it's not in the domain. And note that we're only concerned with the domain of f of x, not f prime of x. Right? All of our domain arguments are always referenced back to the original function. Well, now consider x equals a. That is in the domain of our function, and it's a critical point because the derivative does not exist right there. So that is indeed our only critical point. Okay, those are advanced algebraic techniques, and they seem counterintuitive just because we're not used to them, perhaps. But again, I recommend trying this method and getting used to it, because sometimes you'll have to use it, especially when you start dealing with all kinds of negative rational exponents when you have a bunch of terms. It's really the simplest way to do it. On this particular example, you could proceed without using this method. Let's see how that would look, though I proceed with hesitation because I really think this, this factoring out method is better. Okay, so let's back all the way up to this point and do it the comfortable way, which again, I, I rec recommend that you kind of move away from, but we could rewrite this as square root of x minus a plus, how about x over two times the square root of um, x minus a. Okay, well here we would need some kind of common denominator. So let's do two times rad x minus a. So we'll do square root of two, uh, two times square root of x minus a, and then two times square root of x minus a. Right, so I mean, if you go this route, then you're dealing with denominators everywhere, and, and that brings its own set of problems. Let's see, x, square root of x minus a times square root of x minus a is simply x minus a. So we have 2 times x minus a plus x all over 2 rad x minus a. x minus a. And then we can solve out this top. What do we get? 3x minus 2a over 2 rad x minus a equals 0. OK, and here we can solve it out. We set the numerator equal to 0. We would get x equals 2 thirds a, which is what we got before. And down below, we would get x equals a. And we set that equal to 0. And that's the point where the derivative is not defined. Right, and toss out this first result because that's not in the domain and it leaves us with x equals a as our critical point. Okay, on to part b. We have f of x equals 1 over x plus natural log of x. And again, I'll show both methods in this solution, the factoring out the negative exponent technique and the least common denominator technique. Okay, so let's take the derivative and see what we get. So let's see, f prime of x is, well, first note that 1 over x is actually x to the negative 1. So when we go to take that derivative, we get negative x to the negative 2 plus natural log x, which is 1 over x, which I'll write as x to the negative 1. Now we want to set this equal to 0 and find the places where it equals 0 and also the places where it does not exist. That'll give us our critical points. OK, so using the technique that says to factor out the term with the most negative exponent, Okay, so this tells us to factor out x to the negative 2. When we do that, this whole term here comes out to the front, leaving us simply with negative 1. Plus, now we're factoring out a negative 2. So remember, we subtract exponents. So that will leave us with x to the negative 1 minus a negative 2, which is simply x to the negative 1 plus 2, which is x to the 1. So look at that plus x. So it's kind of a pain, but it's kind of cool. Because you often get this really nice result left behind when you factor out all the crazy negative exponents. Okay, then we have two places here. We have our f prime equals zero spot factor, I guess. And that's negative one plus x. And then this x to the negative two, that tells us where f prime does not exist. All right, well, solving that out, we set the f prime equals 0, 1 equals 0, so we get negative 1 plus x equals 0, or x equals 1. Let's do a quick domain check with our original function and note that x equals 1 is indeed in the domain of f of x. So this is a critical point. Okay, next we're going to look at where the derivative does not exist. 
So that's 1 over x squared, and we're trying to figure out where the denominator equals 0. So that just tells us that x equals 0 is where it does not exist, where the derivative does not exist. But note that x equals 0 is not in the domain. It's not in the domain of 1 over x, and it's not in the domain of natural log of x. So it's profoundly not in the domain of this function. So we ditch that solution as a critical point, not in the domain. OK, and finally, I wanted to show you how to solve this using slightly more recognizable algebraic techniques, um, in case you're really just not feeling this factoring out the most negative exponent technique, though it will come in useful. I guarantee it. Um, but here, let's solve this another way. OK, here's our function again. f of x equals x to the negative 1 plus natural log x. Let's take our derivative. f prime of x then is all right, negative x to the negative 2 plus the derivative of natural log x is 1 over x. We have to solve that where it's equal to 0. All right, rewriting this gives 1 over, make that negative 1 over x squared plus 1 over x equals 0. Well, we're going to need a common denominator here. So let's hit this second term with x over x to get a common denominator of x squared. This gives us negative 1 plus x all over x squared equals 0. And then we can quickly solve this x equals 1 up here. And down here, we have x equals 0. OK, and then we decide that we're going to ditch x equals 0. So that second method is certainly more recognizable, so it seems much easier. But it's not always a practical approach. So I'd say make sure you're well versed in both methods.